Hello everybody and welcome to the Learn Dota 2 League Season 14, Week 1. I'm catching up on some uh, previous games here. And this is going to be a very special case because this seems to be the only game that these two teams played against each other this week. I can't tell if there was some kind of FF situation or if the other game just wasn't ticketed, but this is the one I could find, baby. And if it wasn't ticketed, it's gone now. Radiant Team back. We're taking a look at Brothers against NATO, guided by Allah, uh, captained by Kami, versus Chrono Lucifer, which is a reference to something I don't know, by Pohohoro. Captain by Pohohoro, who I don't know if they're here today? I think Pohohoro is being stood in for. Either way, be interesting to see. Now, I am recording this from the future, which means that, uh, Week 2 has already happened, and if you have not heard this or figured it out by now, I stood in in Week 2, so I wasn't able to get a live game through. I stood in specifically against this Kami team, so it'll be interesting to see. Very average bands, I think, going around. Juggernaut and Dawnbreaker, two very strong heroes this patch. It would be very brave to first phase the Jug, though, I must say. There are definitely some very good counters to him. But I guess if you have second pick and you can't get that all important fourth pick, you know, you don't wanna you don't wanna have the drug picked here and then have a bunch of protection bands going up for him, so that makes sense. Skyrath I don't know so much about. I do know that um Sundance seems to have some success with him. Uh, that's Maniac, as as most of you Dota players probably know him, though to me Sundance because that's his pro name, so that's what we're going with. Meanwhile, on the other side with Chrono Lucifer, banning out, banning out the Scarath, banning out the Pudge. Pudge, of course, very good hero this patch. Banning him out, it's not a bad idea, I think, ever. First pick in the Jakira, which is probably going to be the pretty much traditional first pick for this team. Following up with a Faceless Void. I don't know if I like that against the Undying and Snapfire. That's a very nasty combination of, uh, of heroes to be picking Faceless Void into. For starters, it's kind of unlikely that you're ever going to get Snapfire in the Chronosphere, and if you don't, you absolutely must BKB for it. You just cannot exist if, uh, you know, you can't drop a Chronosphere and then have Snapfire use the ult on the Chronosphere while you don't have BKB. You're just going to die, and then you're going to feel bad. It's also going to make it hard to uh, get into Rush. By the way, if you're wondering, I don't have an I forgot to say this at the top of this recording because I said it at the top of the last recording of a game that it turns out was a broken lobby. Um, I'm flying solo here tonight. No co-commentator with me. So I'm going to be the only voice in your head here. Tinker Ban, Chrono Spart. I guess they got to pick Void if their name is, includes the word Chrono. I also feel like a Void pick this early can lead to some problems, especially considering that so far they're not really banning for it. I mean, Tinker's... Not a great hero for Void to be into, but not the worst in the world either. There are certainly some some quite bad ones. Ten seconds remaining. Brothers against NATO is guided by Allah Ten to ban the Void remaining. Spirit here now. Radiant team back. Chrono banning out the sniper. That is a good anti-void pick. I mean, basically forces the, the Chronos here to either be on Sniper personally or useless because he dies. No Phoenix. Radiant team banned. Imba Spirit is banned. Phoenix is interesting. It's a little redundant on the uh, against the faceless void, but I could also see kind of how it would uh, play into it as well. I did notice that Brothers Against NATO, when they were playing us, did ban out a lot of heroes that we were just kind of looking at and saying, "Who? What? What is this? And why?" They're definitely uh, looking, I think, more at strategic bans rather than comfort when it comes to their lineup. It is very interesting, though, that they would pick Snapfire and then ban the Phoenix. I really don't Radiant understand that. No Tidehunter, either. Dire team pick. I'm gonna pick up a Night Stalker here. That can be interesting. Um, there is no bigger blue ball for Faceless Void in the entire world than he jumps into your team to try and Chrono, and then he just silence. He can't do it. You can't hit BKB to stop that immediately, but that is some time that you're putting down. And Ten seconds remaining. 
could lead to when you have the six second version. Uh, some bad things happening. At the very least, Void with Jakiro is good. Even if I don't really like him too much and do anybody in the enemy lineup. It is statistically likely that you're going to get him dying at least, but if you don't, he can be kind of a pain. You can especially make it kind of, both actually undying and sniping, and make it kind of a nightmare if you get your own team in the in the uh, Chronos here. Got the Hoodwink here. Again, I kind of like Hoodwink with the Faceless Void, it ult, but I... I don't really know what she has to offer otherwise in this specific situation. Ten seconds remaining. Because Undying is going to make her able to be one-shot. Night Stalker is going to chase her down and eat her. Not a great hero to be Hoodwink against that Night Stalker. And Snapfire, of course, you know... Snapfire really almost cares not for Hoodwink. Like, the one issue is if Hoodwink gets to stun the Snapfire. That's kind of a big if. She has to cross quite a lot of ways and not die. And probably cross between a... Uh, cross around a Faceless Void ult as well to get there. You know, we gotta see how it goes. This is a good opportunity to talk about something, about my official opinion on something. Uh, the team names this season. I think the team names. Oh. Got a Shrek. Again, it feels like we're really thinking on Chrono way more about what we're gonna throw into the Chronosphere than about what we're gonna do Dire to the enemy team. team. Back. And that is a really big warning as to why maybe that's not always the best idea. Uh, this is a great Wraith King pick. This really screws up basically everybody that got on them. It does give somebody for Hoodwink to break with the ult, so there is that. And he is not a hard tar target to hit with that unless he's surrounded by skeletons, which he is going to be sometimes, but not that frequently. They move away pretty fast. Five seconds remaining. But... Being able to just reincarnate after the Faceless Void ult means that's a horrible pause one matchup for them. It means that he's going to be able to outlast Lashrak by the time Wraith King reincarnates. Most of Lashrak's man is always already going to be out. Because really, what will the Undying, who likes the long fights and is going to be able to sustain them with his decay, with his tombstone? I think this is a really good lineup for Kami's team so far. Ten seconds. Dire team back. Radiant team back. Be interesting to see who they go with for the mid. Dire team pick. I already wasn't a super fan of Shrek here. I think really Shrek into Night Stalker is never what you want to see. And considering Luth is kind of this team's big guy, you know he's going to be on it. You know, it's, uh, it is not Luth Pause 1 on this team, as most predicted, it is Luth Pause 3. Part of the funny role-related shenanigans that have been going on in this season. But, uh... Got Pit Lord here. I do... You know what? I really like that Pit Lord, actually. I think, at the very least, as a last pick, Pit Lord is gonna actually do a lot of good for him here. I'm a little surprised he made it through, actually. I would've definitely banned him over the Timber Saw. Timbersaw's better than he used to. He's still not good enough that I think he really warrants a ban, to be honest with you. Five seconds remaining. Certainly not in this game. They do have a lot of strength heroes, though, so I guess I can kind of see uh, why you want to not get buzzed, but... And Wraith King's just gonna respawn, what does he care? Techies! Techies. Okay. Kami, team captain, playing as those techies. I do not know what t Kami on Techies is going to look like, but I do know it's kind of A, yet another hero that Faceless Void is not going to be getting reliably in Kronos, and B, is going to be somebody who can kind of mess mess things up in them, and uh, also kind of mess with the Lushrak, mess with the Underlord a little bit. Not as much, but can be kind of bad for him. You know, it's not that hard for Techies to just kind of make the pit, make the actual teleport a little harder for them. I really like the last pick Pitlord here for Chrono. I think he's going to do a lot, but I just don't know. I just 
Even with him there, I don't think a Wraith King with 30... I, even with 35% off, I don't think a Wraith King is going to lose to a Faceless Void in the long term. Like, it's going to be really bad. And really all they need to make him a gigantically, infinitely smaller problem is a reliable Blarik. And Night Stalker can definitely build uh, Silver Edge. Wraith King can definitely build the Silver Edge. And if they are able to get the break off on Underlord, it's going to really suck to be Void. It's going to be really suck, kind of suck to be him, too. But, you know, he's just going to be kind of a pinata for Night Stalker to beat up. Either way, I like this Kami lineup. I do feel like Kami kind of has a problem in uh, establishing space for their team. I think that uh, sometimes it's kind of, you know... Prepare for battle. Oh, um, you lose face. Yeah, that's definitely a standard. Either way, uh I think ultimately, it's gonna take a lot of work for this team to actually win out in this match. Why no jug ban? But they did ban jug. It's gonna take a lot of work. Why yes, Chug Ban? An even better question. A lot of work for this Chrono team to win this match. It's just, you know, when the basic premise of the game starts with the phrase, and Void is never going to kill Wraith King unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong for his team. I don't know. You're, you're putting yourself at a, at a at kind of a disadvantage when you start out. It's also going to be, you know, some hard stuff for... Uh, yeah, you can even see he's uh, got Skywrath Boy as his tag. Um, it's going to be some hard stuff for him to... Uh, oh, he does have the ta ma Tag Maniac. He just doesn't have his username. Okay, I got it backwards. It happens. I do not like this uh, Expedition <laughs> bot lane for the Radiant, though. It's going to get Wraith King quite beat up for really no gain. Looks like they are kind of thinking about going back on that, but ultimately chose not to. Either way, point of the matter is, I don't know. Um, I just, I just don't know. It just doesn't seem like they're they've got a lot to. Right, I was talking about the Chronosphere. Thank you, me. So, it still has to be the Chronosphere. Still has to be really good, even if you're, even if killing Wraith King is not going to be a problem. You still have to not get both like. Undying has to be out of it for it to work at all. Um, Snapfire has to er, in it to work at all. Snapfire has to be in it for it to work at all. Does Techies need to be in it? I mean, it's not bad if he is, certainly. You, you don't really want that crap to be on you when you're trying to uh, use a Chronosphere either. So that is not going to be a big help. I just don't know if Iowa can. I don't know. Either way, it's now time for everybody's favorite part of the game. It's time for some roll call. So starting out, pause one for uh, this team. Brothers, Ala, Nato, et al. You've got Coffee Cat playing on that Wraith King. Pause two, captain of the team. You got Kami Kami, who... I th was he the guy who was like the kind of baller pause five player that I secretly kind of wanted for our team, but he wanted to be a captain? I think he is. Um, pause three, you've got Luth, who can Iowa, on this Night Stalker. Pause four, you've got Maniac on the Snapfire. No, 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 no. And pause five, you've got New Obs, who has casted with us before, on the Undying. I think, I, th I do think that, uh, Undying is a good casting choice for New Obs in this particular game. I think this is the kind of hero that I think he personally could do pretty well on. Just giving his playstyle. Meanwhile, on Chrono, pause one, you've got Inno playing the Faceless Void. Pause two, you've got Moon River on the Lashrak. Pause three, you got Paskey, former champion Paskey, on the Pit Lord. Pause four, you got Shia LaBeef on Hoodwink. They might be killing Wraith King here. Where's Undying? Pulling the wave? Talk about the wrongest time to be doing that! 
Ooh, that was very, very close to disaster there for Coffee Cat. Um, that was before he got Shia LaBeef on the Hoodwink. I believe this is maybe his only 2 old debut? I mean, I think he's been here, but it's been a, quite a while, so at least it's a re-debut. And finally, pause five. You've got Big Wet Poppy standing in for, uh, standing in for Pohohoro, captain of the team. I believe that this is somebody that I know otherwise, but I don't know who it is. I know I've seen this Wakanda Forever tag, though. I'm dying in Wraith King, trying to turn it around a little bit on the Pit Lord here, before dropping this Pit in response. Ultimately, nothing really coming of it. It's kind of the issue with the Wraith King Undying lane here, is that the skills need to come out in the right order. If you Wraith King stun and then the Tombstone drops, then, you know, you got way less zombies than if you Tombstone and then stunned. You kind of saw what happens there. Getting a little chased out here. Kira's definitely a good pick for his support with the Void here, both in terms of the long term and in terms of the lane phase. You know... Shakira is going to have a lot of ability to just try and get both Night Stalker and Skyrath Mage. Not Skyrath Mage. Night Stalker and uh, Snapfire to get the hell out of this lane. Coffee Cat should not be trying to ban with their support player right here. I guess, in fairness, not much else he could, they could be doing, but. Good pull at the very least. Well, it's very heavy on the pull strategy. It seems to be, you know, basically every single opportunity he get. Okay, I really thought for a second that was a tombstone being dropped for that. Mm, this should be... Oh no, first blood there on Undying. I'm starting to think that maybe this Hoodwink was picked for this lane, because this is definitely a very menacing lane. You know, Hoodwink has a great ability to keep you in the pit, and if you don't have many targets for the Acorn to bounce to, get very deadly very fast! Coffee Cat is gonna... Well, certainly gonna die if they just kinda stand there. <laughs> yeah, I probably should've, should've scooched on that one a little bit, but that's still okay. If you can get the uh, the short range version of the scatter blast, like the point blank version, you definitely always want to. Probably a little more important at higher levels, though. I think I'm gonna attempt some revenge here while Jakiro randomly dies at top lane. Nothing that comes out of this. We'll take a look at that. Looks like it's not. So let's uh, head back into the past. Get a good look at this. Dyer's courier has been killed. It's definitely it does look like dive and time. The <laughs> definitely. Shouldn't have probably pulled here. You are the dead of night. It's an interesting thing, the old pull. You know, it doesn't seem like a function in Dota that can backfire on you very easily. It's so routine, you never think about it. But at a time like that. Okay, it's gonna be totally worth it if uh Void just gets a casual kill here. Never mind. Yeek. Uh, okay, Void gets a casual kill anyway, because Snapfire walked into the creep wave with no region going, okay. That ain't great, Snap. Please use your saps. Anyway, as I was trying to say there, um... Oh, man, what was I trying to say? The, the thought has left my brain. Too much has happened. I think I was talking about what an effective lane that's, that uh, the Hoodwink and the Pit Lord are, and that's definitely still the case, so I think probably not worth any more trawling than I've already given it. Dyer so far are just completely ahead in terms of last hits. Every every counterpart is ahead of their own. Notably, this is Night Stalker Clock, though. Just saying. Regeneration! 
could get something done here with this first night. Though him lacking in silence means this is a little bit of a fever dream. Yep, that wasn't happening. Did get Moon to TP in though. All they get for this is Maniac. It's still kind of worth it as long as Kami is able to use this lane. You know, two cores and a support gang up to cash in a check on their pause for. That's not a great use of their time, frankly. They get something out of it, but. For a teleport, especially, you probably want more than that. Could tell you this, though. If you're gonna get any kills on Void in this lane, you need a point of the silence. If you don't have any points in the silence, uh, you can basically expect what you just hap had happened there. Moon is back at mid now. It's called in a, another TP scroll. It is rushing straight for a Hood of Defiance, which is a little interesting. This is a fairly magic damage heavy team with the Snapfire, uh, Night Stalker's Void, the Taggies lineup. Everybody has at least something to offer magic damage wise. It's a good choice. Tick tock. First chrono of the game. Very well placed, but uh, that's not going to be worth it if he dies for <laughs> poor loot does. You might think... No bash is Lamau. Nice Valve. Thank you. I'm Valve. You might think that that would be okay, but I mean... I can definitely see why the chrono happened, but... Need to buy Arcana. That's true. It's true. If you had the arcane, if you spend the money, Gabe in gives you the dice rolls. He's probably personally watching this game too. Oh, coffee check and quite messed up. New Wobs is just not in this lane. You cannot play like this with a Wraith King in your lane. I know I said it before. I'll say it again too. Wraith King as a laner, he's one of the worst there is. All right, he's got a stun. The stun can do some nasty damage to you, but that's all he's got, and he is deceptively fragile. If you're just constantly walking out to take the bounty runes, if you're just constantly walking out to pull, if Wraith King is spending a lot of time alone in this lane, he's putting himself in danger constantly. It's not what you want to have happen with this lineup. Dyer's top tower is and you can see the effects of it here. Wraith King, lowest last hits in the entire server as far as the cores go. Not great, especially considering he's 10 down from second to last place. If there is one silver lining, at least the second to last place is their pause water. This probably would have been a kill if uh, that Radiance ice path lands, but I don't think it's going to be Dyer's anymore. Top tower is under Especially not if ha Techie's coming in with a haste rune. SVSV, SV, night time is on. This is a lot for Jakiro. If they get the tower, at least, that's Radiance something. But I mean, in this attack. lane, they got a pause five. In the other, in the bot lane, the other team got the pause one. That is Dyer's not an equal trade. They need to get attack. something for this. And they got a the T1 at mid, which just clued me into the fact Moon River did not have to TP to get that done. There's just these two guys going at it here. Not a great uh, early game trade here for Kami's lineup. For the brothers against NATO. And look, Night Soccer's not even going to get the last hit on this tower. Come on now. Sad. Dyer's top tower has fallen. At the very least, the tower is gone. So there is that, but... Again, for all that was required for that, and all they lost in the process, eh, yeesh. In hindsight, I think he definitely would have been better off going bot and at least scaring them off of Wraith Gang. Is kill chance, po kill possibility down here? Maybe. I don't think Techies is the best at killing either of these guys, but you know. Got the Tombstone, got the K. Got something done. Very lethal combination happening under this tower. Good cookie out on the Wraith King, but it doesn't matter when the T Hoodwinkle's coming after him. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. This team is to run Wraith King again, and in fairness, I don't think they knew there was gonna be a Wraith King early on. They definitely need to more protect the support Radiant's in with them. At least play more protectively, like, uh, 
Noob spent a lot of time trying to play with the equilibrium. Honestly, it's probably worth throwing throwing lays into the enemy pause three sometimes in order to not have Wraith King die all the time. And speaking of dying all the time, that's what Kami's going to be doing now. Bitlord teleports in on top of him and seals his fate totally. This is your mid laner in a game where you've already kind of lost most of your lanes. That ain't great. At the very least, if there is a team that can lose the lanes and still come back from it, it is this team. They have to turn around this deficit, though. Look at this deficit. Wraith King is a grand under the next lowest core. And he's probably about to die again. They're all just walking at him. As is reincarnate, which is good. It's what you want to do if you're Wraith King here. Actually, actually, this is awesome! Ho-ho! <laughs> Now this is why you picked the Wraith King. This a very good decision. Very good decision on Kaffee Cat's part to pick up that uh, that level of ult at level 8. That definitely just created the uh, the murder there. Just the total flattening of the uh, Chrono lineup. That is absolutely what you want to have happen. Wraith King was uh, around for the assists there. Didn't get much money for it, but what are you going to do? It's a lot of space for it, that Radiant's much is certain. Tower is under attack. Fantastic fu stuff. Paskey just hit Sol Ring. Okay. I don't like Sol Ring on Bit Lord at all anymore, to be honest with you, but you know. Each to their own, as they say. Just get a casual little talisman. Promise you it'll be worth it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Deckies coming out hard here. Deckies wants to get a little involved. And these skeletons are picking out a great target for him! The, uh, ooh! Narrowly dodging the, uh, Hoodwink ult there. Uh, ooh, the hell, the Hood of Defiance there. Made that very, made it very, very hard for them to kill their Shrek, though. And I think this is ultimately already not worth it and getting worse. Yeah, they can't do stuff like this without Undying being there. They just cannot. That was super bad for them. The presence of Undying and the ability for Reincarnate to happen are why they got, are why Dyer got flattened when they tried to take the T2 bot here. Undying being halfway across the map, I mean, to be honest, probably should have TP'd. But Undying being halfway across the map when they try to go on that, no, that, that's not happening. It's not good for them. It's quite a big stack here, though. Radiant has been stacking this triangle very heavily. It's kind of tough for Wraith King to take those at this point, even with full skeletons. It is actually a kind of a, a very pressing matter to take these ASAP. They might need to cooperate to do so, because Wraith King kind of has a hard time taking them. It takes a while for him to get them, but uh, one guy who certainly does in this Shrek. Shrek's in silence here is a good silence for them. Yep, the Shrek not able to get any damage out before he goes down. Completely annihilated by loot there. He's finished himself a spirit vessel. Definitely be good for them this game. He's gonna make items like Mega total non option. Ooh. Interesting decision, but I like it. Bringing out the snap bolt here. Dropping it right on top of Pit Lord's head. Down he goes. Radiance top tower. Lou's still hungry. Lou's still chasing. Looking unlikely for Takira to live here. He's gonna have to uh, ice path away and just get out. But uh, oop, nope, he's dead. Good fight there. Very good use of this knight by the Night Stalker. As much as he can to uh, to take as much space, take as much many lives as he could, and he did. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. King's still unfortunately behind on his farm, but it should help him get a l start to seal the deal a little bit. Looks like he's gonna try and do this ancient stack. And yeah, all the skeletons just die immediately, and he has to walk away. 
Dyer's bottom tower is under She's a bit unfortunate. She's definitely starting a situation like this with the uh, other step. We're still fighting up here? Okay. Take a look at how this starts. This pit is not actually here. It's uh, display purposes only. And now it is. It's a good pit. So there's a lot of potential to do a lot of damage here. Kami's just gonna casually die. And uh, Maniac, the Snapfire, just kind of in the wrongest spot possible. Dying is finally ulted. But nothing comes out of it. Two legged freak indeed. This team is going to be a slave to their cooldowns in this game, and that was a great example of it right there. Both teams have lost four people at each other's bottom T2 towers now, which, which is kind of funny. During that time, Wraith King's steadily farming, but the inability for him to take this Ancient Stack is going to mean it's going to take him just a little longer to start catching back up on this ground. The Shrek made ground back on him. Casual kill there on the uh, on the Takiro by Techies. Luth is going hard here for uh, Frodwink. Quite likely Kami takes this one. Or now Luth just comes in, takes uh, takes it from the back. Radiance bottom tower. Luth takes the Pit Lord Express the hell not Luth. Uh, Paskey takes the Pit Lord Express the hell out of this situation. Looks like they're trying to go back in for another round. I don't know if I can condone this. They know they're coming. No, not only that they're coming, but roughly what numbers are coming in. Uh, my kingdom for flying vision right now, though. They had no idea where, where Latrax actually hanging out. And now Latrax is probably safe. Bit disappointing there. Shrek very likely dead if they had any idea where he was. Wraith King still sitting consistently at about a grand under the uh, next core. Mikey's did not accept very easily what happened in that last encounter. Tried to take the battle to them. Ooh. Moon River getting beat up by zombies here. Shakira tries to uh Shakira tries to stun them, that doesn't actually work. He just barely gets out alive. The rest of the team eats the pit lord as cons compensation. Wraith King using these skeletons to try and push the T1 mid, a good use of them. Goes back to this jungle camp here. Much of the success in this game is gonna be predicated on Wraith King's ability to live. Yasha here. This is a very dead Night Stalker. Would have been funny if he got killed by one of the jungle camp guys down here, but no such luck. Chrono 1 at this point in the game. Certainly very acceptable, especially if the kill on the second most valuable core comes out of it. Right now it's, uh, the, the gap between Wraith King and Faceless Void isn't great. It's not Im just inconceivable though, like I said, it's gonna be hard for Void to kill Wraith King ever, but if he gets like twice Wraith King's net worth, it's gonna get a lot easier all of a sudden. Take a look at some items casual here. No big surprises on what everyone's got or where everyone's status is given on that net, net worth chart. Techie's going for a Yules here is interesting, though. He's also taking the uh, cast range over the mana. I guess because he has two restoratives anyway. So what's the harm? Got smoke coming out here. Three smoked, but they don't really seem to have a very good idea of where Dyer is at all. Basically, they have one Observer Ward up on this entire map, and it's not really giving them any sort of picture. They're really hoping that they were doing Rush right now. No such luck. Now they're kind of hoping maybe they're in the jungle. Not there either. 
Well, they're kind of standing at mid. Hanging out. I'm the Night Stalker again. Boy, going in on him, though. This time he's going to find a much harder target to try and take. Void has BKB. It's not going to be falling to uh, any of these shenanigans. Snapfire in a very bad spot here. Rob's standing a little close to their lineup considering where his own cores are. Wraith King and Night Stalker here definitely need to make a decision. The worst they, they only lost support here, and that's not bad, but Wraith King and Night Stalker spent that entire fight running around in a circle deciding whether or not they should join or not. The answer was no. Not after the pit fell that cleanly sliced her team in half and got Snapfire killed. But just him being there, I think not only did he give New Ob's kind of an undue amount of confidence and sticking around, which got him killed, but it also just meant that Wraith King got absolutely nothing done during that time period. Smoke going out, four man going into the Radiant Jungle, nothing here. They scan out the triangle, though. They know Wraith King's hanging out there, or at least they got a pretty good idea. Another solo chrono comes out on the Night Stalker. Get a lull in the chat. He can laugh as much as he wants, though, at this point, when you've got... When you know you've got a much better target in the triangle, the scan told you everything you need to know on that, I really gotta question it. I don't know if I'm lolling there. You really could've got Wraith King. Or at least you could have wasted his his ult and made something come of it. Nobody on his team was in a position to fight. It's not going to be that common that you're going to get good opportunities to kill him. That may very well have been the last clean good opportunity to kill the Wraith King once this BKB comes out. He is now only 100 gold under the next lowest core. The gap between him and Void is still as large as it ever was, but that's not going to necessarily matter if Void is going to be mortal, which he is. And Wraith King is not going to be mortal, which doesn't look like he's going to be anytime soon. He's now finally going to be able to run over this ancient camp that's been stacked up here for eons. Very surprised. Another benefit they would have actually had if they decided to go over here instead of dropping the ult on the Lone Night Stalker there. I say would have gotten a massive stack on the, that ancient gap there as well, because that was not done when uh, they scanned out the wraith kind. So, so that tactical decision making at work there did not favor the dire in that instance. Though they did get a major kill, they lost a lot more. That uh. It's uh, what we call the opportunity cost. They lost a lot more of that opportunity cost. Luth might be in a bad position here. Time is money. I mean, less bad if it's a knight. Definitely notice the dewarding going on. This is a bit unfortunate, though. You do not want to be running back to your pace in as defensive a position as you could possibly be in. At n as Night Stalker at night. I think if nothing else, the Chronosphere is starting getting into his head, though. It is a bit before it comes on, and he's not on the side of the map. Smoke coming out. Looks like Pitlord is the man of the hour here, though they're opting to go for the Lashrak instead, which is probably not the worst idea. He's probably an easier kill. I think he kind of sees it coming, though. There will be no second hiding spot here. This time, Lashrak is most definitively dead. Bitlore brings the crew in for uh, for another go, but nobody on Radiant actually sticks around to fight them. Which is interesting, I think it's actually a good fight if they take it. Void is nowhere close, they know that at this point because he just showed on the wave. It's night, it's night time, they have basically all their ults. Would like to push instead with Wraith King present. We just finish the Scotty. Wraith King compromising spot. Tick tock. They're gonna go for the Wraith King here. Void realizes, hey, maybe that's not a great idea. Goes for uh goes for the Snapfire instead. Wraith King's back up, still stunned. Immediately throws it at the Void while his team's trying to kill everybody they can on the die in the back. But uh this isn't good. He's just gonna go down very casually here. His team kinda left him to die.
Well, there we go. We have found how you kill the Wraith King at Stasis Void. You just convince his team not to defend him and to go get other kills instead. Horrible sequence for Radiant there. That was exactly what they don't want to do. And just to be blunt, that was kind of bad execution. They definitely needed to make sure that Wraith King did not just die two times in a row immediately. Which is not that hard to do against this lineup, but they still kind of let it happen. If I'm them, I'm sweating a little bit after that. So in the interest of fairness, part of that happened because the king decided to fight without that BKB up yet. Despite being very close to it, which, yeah, that wasn't good. We also should not be trying to take the last hits from the Wraith King here. Nice talkers good this game, but if your casual deaths so far have not been an indication enough to you, not that good. I'm trying to go for Void here. E is not going to have it, E is just TPing. Needed Snap to be closer to that for there to be any hope here. I'm gonna go through jungle, find absolutely nothing. Everybody on Dire is in their own jungle right now, though they're not smoked so much. Okay, but they're gonna run right into Void and he literally just jumped. Okay, but it's gonna cult come off cooldown just perfect time. Eight. Seven. Nope. Well, the solo, solo Chronosphere coming out for Undying here. Which I, again, I don't know if I exactly agree with that. When you have so many stuns on your team, including your own bash. Yeah, again, that's not good. Wraith King just died nine seconds before his ult came off of a cooldown. And again, it just kind of happened because his own team split off quite far from him. Now, uh, Dyer are gonna try and secure the Roche pit here, though. And with the Snapfire ult just having been used, it's gonna be a little hard to argue with, though. Snap ult is used and the Undying is down. I mean, if he was here, he doesn't have Tombstone, so what can he do? Not that much. Jackie's just gonna do the ultimate Chad move, though, come right in here. Not gonna matter, though, he's just gonna die immediately, then Roche is gonna go down. <laughs> Void gets Aegis, smoke out of the Roche Pit. Looking firmly at Snapfire, who is making tracks the other way. Untying, getting four staffed into the enemy lineup to die immediately. Always very sad when that happens. Gonna take out T1 here as Night Sulker goes through the T1 bot. Gangler comes out. Team actually does not have the best uphill, so. Sulker sees the void here. Does have kind of an opportunity. He is going to just kill the courier and TP out, though. A tie to the impurities. It's very interesting. When we played this team, they did not have this specific problem of just kind of letting their paws one die and just letting poor coffee cat just be alone in these fights. So, so far this game, that seems to be the recurring trend. Everyone just clears up from racing who just kind of dies alone in a one v five. It's for all of us. And everyone else has to leave because you know he just lost their pause one, and they have no more team fight ability. Techie just finished an E blade. It's gonna be funny. Also means he's another guy who absolutely has to be in the uh, Chronosphere. Jakiro just probably regrets TPing out here. If I'm a if I'm a betting man, Jakiro probably. Regrets at least a little bit. Faith King notably is not present for this fight. Wait, it's BKB to stop the E-Blade on himself. A little surprising that Techie sent E-Blade the Undying instead. 
Wraith King needs to just not be here. It's way too late to get involved now. Gets pinged. It is funny, now we have the opposite fight. The one where Wraith King doesn't really get involved and his team just kind of dies. But considering Night Stalker lived, I don't know, that's not that bad of a trade for him. As long as, as Wraith King uses the space, rather than just kind of being up at the fight. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. It looks like this Rax is rather screwed. Radiant's Especially if Night Stalker is just kind of randomly going to die to uh, Good Lord here. Oh, he's going to TP, he's fine. I like that E Blade. Void, uh, Void is probably going to regret that jump really soon. Yeah, he is uh, sans BKB right now. Stalker has bought back. Reincarnate on the Wraith King. Boy's actually gonna go for the Rax. He's not gonna get it though. BKB actually managed to cool all the way down during that fight, and it's already back. Nice Stalker found BKB's out here. Techies go through a suicide squad. Boy just walks away. Snapfire ult comes out, but it is just too dang late. They're all they already got what they came for, and they are walking away. Actually takes most of his life bar though. Nobody realizes they're trying too busy running away from the Lashrak here. You lose face and all life to take. Really gotta question the value of the undying buyback when he had no tombstone and also just immediately died to the Kronos here. <laughs> Kami calls the G's and we're getting out of here. Alright. Well, that makes this quite an easy series then, doesn't it? Oh, good lord almighty. This is not a good look for Brothers Against NATO, Guided by Ella. They have a way better team comp than what their actual performance implies here. <laughs> What's the issues? Let's let's break them down, shall we? It starts with this. Wraith King was not protected in lane. Wraith King was not protected in the mid game. And Wraith King was not protected when the Ancient was about to blow. Uh, there was really no attention being paid here, and again, I think they did. They have been making strides to turn that around. I noticed in their week two game against being ten, they were not having that problem. They were doing a lot, a lot. They were trying everything they could to try and keep the coffee cat alive. But here, it just felt like they just the the plight of the coffee cat fell on totally deaf ears. Just every time Wraith King was just alone, Wraith King died twice, which is really the worst part. This is not a game where Wraith King should be tying twice in basically any scenario, but Wraith King was all the time. I think uh, more defensive support than the Undying, even if it does work well for Nuobs, would have done a lot for them here. A more defensive playstyle would have done a lot for them here. Um, I do think there is some fault on Coffee Cat. I do think Coffee Cat was trying to fight way too early. You just cannot do that as Wraith King. And I think there was a lot of will we, won't we going on with this team. I think just I there's not many places in Dota where you can say definitively this is the worst place to be. But the absolute worst place to be in Dota, the worst place on the entire map, the worst place in the entire game is to be spinning around in a circle not doing anything wondering if, wondering if you should go into the fight or not. That is a total waste of time and unfortunately we saw a lot of that on Brothers Brothers against NATO, especially on Coffee Cat's part. And really, that's it. I mean, I think Paskey played a very good game here, in particular. I think the Hoodwink, even though Hoodwink stood out like a sore thumb in this lineup, did manage to find a niche here and just working with the Pit Lord, basically being an escort fighter for the Pit Lord here. Kira did it fairly well. Lesh did it fairly well. 
Void, they did a they did a very good job making sure to funnel every every kill they got to Void, making funneling everything they couldn't avoid. It was to be blunt a very high risk maneuver. If if uh, they funneled everything they got into Void and Wraith King started catching up a little bit and you know it started getting to the point where Void could not get the second kill, then that would have been a massive disaster and everything would have fell on their head. But luckily, like I said, Wraith King just trying to fight a little too early, not very well protected by their team. I don't know. I don't know. It is unfortunate to say this, and I do hate to say this because it's always going to sound mean when you say this. I do think this game was more lost by Brothers Against Nano than it was won by Chrono Lucifer. So yeah, that's how it goes. If you or somebody you know want to learn Dota 2 at a casual or more competitive level, go to ld2l.gg today to sign up. Uh, our sponsor is still that that Pods 3 Dojo. It is going to be going up after week 3 because, you know, I'll have seen everybody's team by that point. Very unfortunate I wasn't able to get it up by, by the time in time for week two, but you know, it happens. We'll still have a lot to talk about. We'll see you next time.